Welcome back to assignment three. We're going to move on to task five now, which is to calculate the yield stress. So um, the exercise describes that the yield stress is the stress at which um, the material no longer responds elastically, meaning like it's no longer a straight line between the um, strain and the stress. So we've already been able to do a plot of this straight line that connect using the modulus of elasticity you multiply the E with the strain and it gives you this stress line here. So we, the question is, when do these two become different? That's when the material is yielded. So we're given some instructions on how to find the yield point because this is, this is a coding assignment after all. It says to check when the straight line becomes quite different from the um, data. So let's, let's get all the predictions of the straight line. Let's get all the stress values of that straight line. So I'm going to write uh, is the linear elastic or the yeah linear elastic stress. Do a long name I suppose. These are all the values predicted by that straight line. So let's just take E times all the strain values. Okay so you can see how we plotted before the values of the straight line. We did this but we've already got E now so it should be equal to that. We could use polyval as well. It would be the same thing. So if we put polyval here um, and, and polyval of the strain, this would be roughly the same. So this would be um, approximately, you could use either one, equal to polyval P of strain. The difference being that there's no, um, P2 term, P2 is zero for this case. Um, okay, shouldn't make any difference. So the question says, when is the stress difference um, greater than a certain amount? So we need to calculate the difference between this stress, the straight line, and the data. So stress difference. It's good to give your variable names, give names to your variables which explain what they are. This is a lot better than using short variable names. So we want the difference between the real stress from the data, that's just stress if you remember, minus this straight line stress. But we want the difference, um, when this is negative, we want it to be positive. We want the absolute difference, don't we? So you're going to write the word absolute. And you should test that these are now just positive values. So again, I suggest that you give it a try, try and plot, for example, the strain versus the stress difference. So for every line you write, for every new, even for every new thing you do, you could have a look and plot to see what the result looks like. It'll help you understand. Let's hope that hold off has worked there. It's not going to plot on the same plot. Here we go. Look at that. So for these strain values, not much difference. And then at some point, a difference starts to appear. The question says that um, the tasks say that when the difference is 3 times 10 to the 5, the material is yielded. So this whole y-axis is on the uh, scale of 10 to the 6. So this is 6 times 10 to the 6, 5 times 10 to the 6. So this is 1 times 10 to the 6. So here is 5 times 10 to the uh, 5 times 10 to the 5. And so 3 times 10 to the 5 is somewhere around here. So it looks about right when the material is yielded. So how can we find um, the point at which this stress difference is larger than, let's say, 3 times 10 to the 5? How can we find um, the stresses or the, the, a point at which this happens? There's lots of ways to do it. Um, I think there's a function called find min or just min. You can look up in the documentation. I'm going to show you one way to do it, which is exactly the same things we've already done. This will give me all the stresses because this vector here is the same length as this vector here, or array we say in MATLAB. This will give us all the stresses which are uh, correspond to the stresses where the stress difference is greater than 3 times 10 to the 5. So we could call this the yield stresses. They're all the stresses past yield.
But the question explains that the yield stress itself is the minimum of this, is the smallest value. You could use the function min again, but an easier way to do it is because the stress difference it just keeps increasing really, we know that the yield stress will be the first value here. Okay? Um, so you can, how could we test that? I guess we could try to do a plot. So let's do a plot. Hold on. We want to plot a straight line at the yield point. How are we going to do that? What we're going to do is we're going to create a vector that goes from 0 to, um, I don't know, the last string, maybe the last string, end. And then, we're, so the x, that, those are the two x values we're going to look at, and we're going to put that the yield stress um, is the y value for these two x values. So we're going to create a straight line along the yield stress. That's what I'm trying to plot here. So here goes. This will then be yield. I want it to be the straight line, so I'm going to have a straight line, a uh, horizontal line has the same y value. So it can be yield and yield. Okay, that should work. Again, label, labeling the axes would probably be better. Let's have a look. Oh, right, uh, I got a straight line, but I plotted it onto the wrong graph, because I don't want to plot it on the stress difference. I want to plot it on the actual stress. I want to see if this, the yield looks like it's at the right point of the stresses. Here it goes. Aha! Uh -huh. Does that straight line look like roughly where the material stops being elastic? Yeah, looks pretty good. So that's it. Uh, that's the end of this task. Come back for task six.